Hey, this is Jonathan. The question is, what is a good ratio of people in the field to people in the office? And I, I'm sure there's an answer to this question. I'm not the one to answer it. I don't know the exact answer on this one. Um, I've been through growing a couple service companies. I've never come up with a ratio. I don't have a percentage. I'm sure somebody does, but it may not apply to your business. And let me give you a couple examples. And here's why I don't even think I could tell you the, the ratio. But hopefully in this answer, you'll get a couple ideas. So one of the things you're going to notice about your business is, or other people's businesses as well, if you're maintenance and somebody else's landscape, that's totally two different businesses. These ratios are different for those kinds of businesses. So uh, ratios of revenue or net profit or gross margin or employee ratios, they vary heavily by maintenance business and versus landscape business or landscape versus irrigation or maintenance residential versus commercial. There's so many factors. So you can't look at a lot of, most ratios, you can't pay any attention to them, whether again, they're employees or money ratios, and uh, unless they are very, very similar to your business. So if you're heavily small residential and that's all you do, then you have a completely different cost structure than the guys with the big commercial properties. And you have a completely different ratio of um, employees to production. Great example, if you're very small residential, then you're primarily using small mowers. And you need more guys pushing more small mowers. If you're heavily big commercial, then you've got more guys on 52 inch and 61 inch riders. And so, more production, less employees. If you're doing really big stuff, you've got them on those big tractors, and they're, they're, I don't even know how many feet across they are, things you'd see mowing school districts and football fields and huge commercial lots. Well, obviously, you've got huge equipment cost, lower uh, labor cost. So you can't apply these ratios, just like you can't apply ratios for what a landscape company earns in their gross revenue and margin versus a maintenance company. The maintenance company is almost ex exclusively labor. Almost everything of their revenue is exclusively generated off labor and production, whereas a landscape company is heavily off reselling materials. So they're going to show much higher gross revenue potentially um, with a lot less employees than, say, a, res a maintenance company would because they're reselling trees and plants and all those things. So be careful looking at ratios. The other thing is if you do find a residential, so I'm using this example, a residential mowing company very much like yourself. Say that's what you did. And I don't, I don't know what you do, but let's say you're very, you focus on small residential and you find some other really good businesses that are doing small residential. Well, your ratios are going to be completely out of whack compared to them, depending on where you're at in the business. If you're brand new, then you're scattered all over town and you're, you're driving all over and you're working to build density in your crews. Well, a big commercial, a big residential company that has lots of residential that's smart, that's really targeted their marketing and focused, they're going to have high density. They're going to need less workers to make more money because they're not in the trucks driving around. So you've got this temporary problem and you can't judge yourself against them. You've just got to fix the problem. Likewise, if you're in a heavy growth phase, so let's say you had a goal of having three crews and you've achieved your three crews, and all you're doing now is getting rid of low-performing clients and uh, replacing them with high-value, better clients because you don't want to grow past three crews. So as you get new accounts, you're just improving your client base. Well, if you're doing that, you have virtually no marketing expense. You don't need many salespeople. You don't really need many estimators. You don't have any of that. You've built this nicely little fine-tuned business. But if you're a company that has 20 crews and you're going to 40 and you're going there fast, your ratios are all out of whack. You're spending all kinds of money um, hiring people way before you need them and training them and getting them ready and looking for the next area you're going to expand into and expending a lot of money to hire the knowledge to move yourself and your company in that market. By hiring knowledge, I mean hiring workers that have the knowledge that you can bring in early. You can't get, sometimes you can't get all your money back out of them immediately. I mean, they don't completely cover their cost for the first so many months that you hire them because you had to get them in early to be able to handle the growth when it comes. So your, your ratios are completely out of whack compared to the little guy that's got three crews and he's happy and he's just optimizing his business. So I don't know how anybody can answer the question. I'm sure there are people that do. There's some really sharp, so where you'd look for this answer is any of the guys that have really strong accounting backgrounds, number backgrounds, 
um, that are in the green industry that can answer this, that have consulted with a lot of companies and have really looked at the number side of the business. Not so much the marketing, not so much the growth, more the numbers, handling the books, things like that. They can give you some, some guides. And I'm sure they'd say the same thing, that if you're small and trying to grow quickly, your numbers are going to, your ratios are going to be out of whack compared to somebody that's pretty much happy where they're at. And so you need to ask those kinds of questions and uh, go to somebody that really understands accounting and numbers in the green industry to get that answered in detail.